Hey everyone. Actually, let me turn my volume down so you guys don't have to listen to all my pinging and such. But, uh, all right, getting myself straight over here so I can join you guys to do a fun craft with you. Let me adjust the camera a tad. Because, you know, it's about the project. <laughs> but I guess I do need a head, right? Hang on. Okay, I think we're in good shape. All right. So, I'm going to just um, pop on over. Hey, I see Susie's joining. Hey, um, thanks for joining. Let me just get all set up. You guys don't know how it is for me. All right. Um, and then let me turn all my sounds off so we don't have to hear it in stereo. Okay. Oh, there we are. Oh, we got people hopping on already. Okay, terrific. All right, we got... Tina, start out with Susie, then Jan, hey, from Kentucky. Tina and Arlene and Julie, also from Louisiana. Did I say that right, Julie? Louisiana? Louisiana? What's your preference? <laughs> All right, today, folks, I am going to be working with um, our tree five pack MDF. So I've put up in the description of this video, I've put the um, all the products that we're going to be using. So I am using this Irish cream chalk paste. That's what I've chosen for today. Um, I have some brilliant white. We're going to do something fun together. And I've got these. Um, this is called Tree Patterns. It's a 12 by 18 and it goes with our MDF uh, Tree 5 Pack. If you haven't seen this before, what this is, is it comes with, I've already pre-painted so you guys didn't have to watch me, but um, it basically it comes with a little slots like this that we designed for you guys last year to use, and then five different trees. So there are three that look like this, this size, and coincidentally they match the patterns, and then um, this big guy right here. So there are two this size and two of the other size with the other shape. Let me, I'm sorry, I got... We're off just a little bit. All right, that's better. All right, so uh, it's called MDF Five Pack, and if you haven't used it before, you should. Hey, Barbara and Lynn, spreading the love. Thank you so much. And Angie, thank you so much for sprinkling. Hi, Diane and Dixie and Sherilyn and Julie and Sheila. Well, it's hard to keep up. Diana, yeah, if you guys don't mind just sprinkling this around, sharing the love, that would be so awesome. I would love that. Okay, so I told you um, Irish cream chalk paste, white, brilliant white chalk paste. I've got the MDF five pack um, trees, comes like this. Two of these, three of these, and then the slats to put, to stand them up in, okay? And then I am using the uh, tree patterns, 12 by 18. All right, so I had this idea before I came on, and I'm going to show you guys step-by-step step how to do it. Okay, but to save us time, I did go ahead and paint both sides of my surfaces. Hey, Barbara, is there a special word for the day? Oh, you know what, Barbara? I was just coming on to have some fun. Um, I think you're going to have to come back for that tomorrow. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to give anything away, but you know what? We will tomorrow. We will tomorrow. That's usually on Wednesdays, and we've been doing it almost every day uh, for the last few days. Um, so, bless your page. Thank you so much. So, stay tuned. We will. All right. But you are going to enjoy this project, or at least I hope you are. All right. So, uh, like I said, I'm starting out with this MDF. Uh, pack and what I did is I went ahead and I painted all five pieces plus the base So it's actually a six pack. It's five trees and the base and I went ahead and painted them two coats of white chalk paint Now sometimes people ask me what chalk paint that I use uh, on this particular one um, I just bought it a long time ago, and I used the daylights out of it It's this rust-oleum chalked and this one is called linen white that's what I used. Use any color you want. So sometimes I I tr um, tend to veer towards more of the traditional uh, Christmas look. But today I'm going to do something different. Not only are we going to do like a different type of project, but 
I'm going to do different colors as well. Okay, so we're ready to get into it. Do you guys want to find out what we're doing that's so special today? All right, so I am going to show you a new technique. That's what I like to do. I'm cleaning up my mess right now, as you can see. All right, so for this special technique, you are going to need this five pack. You are going to need some fast and final. You don't have to use DAP, but it's called lightweight spackling. Now, you can use the others, but I'm going to tell you, this dries a lot quicker. You're going to be happier with the results. Don't have an affiliation, nothing at all. It's just, this is my preference. Okay, like I said, use anything you want. It's just that's going to be a lot easier. Those are tall trees. Yes, they are, ma'am. Barbara, awesome. Christina, Christina is new here. Thanks for joining us, Christina. All right, so we're going to need, to get started, we're going to need some of this. Uh, lightweight spackling. We are going to need, I use these just because I was cake decorator for eons and I have them. Um, and I'm using these disposable decorating bags. And I just buy them in a pack of 100. They're super expensive. You can make your own cones. Um, I just decided that this is going to be easier. And then you're going to need this five pack. Now I'm going to give you a little preview of what I've done so you'll know where we're headed. So I wanted to add some texture and make my trees look different. I am going to do the patterns, but on a couple of them, I wanted them to super pop. So I went for this. Look at this. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We are not done here. I had to do this ahead of time because i got to give it a few minutes to dry before I can really do anything with it. And so I did this about an hour and a half ago, okay? So... I decided one side of the trees was going to be white. The other side was going to be this sort of tan color that I got. Um, I just picked it up in the oops section. It was some kind of color match they had, but a tan color. Um, and it really, really matched about as close as I could get to this Irish cream. I did both sides because the great thing about these trees is put one flavor on one side and one flavor on the other. You could have traditional on one side and then flip it around the whole base and everything and have a di totally different theme on the other side. All right, so this is what we're going to work toward. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the trees that I already have painted. Now, both of the others, I mean all the others, I painted two coats, both colors of paint, just because this is an MDF surface, and the way the laser goes, it around, goes around it, I needed to seal that in. So, I'm going to start with um, this pastry bag and open this up. I bought the kit last year and wasn't able to make it. This is what Susie's saying. So excited to make it now. Decorating cakes for years, too. Awesome. Oh, I'd love to see some of your cakes. I had the most fun. I still I still make them for my family and friends. All right, so I'm just um, using a, a cake spatula because I have it because I do cakes. And um, I'm going to grab it just like I would frosting. And I'm turning this bag, uh, sort of making a collar out of it so that I can shove this down in there and then grab, then pinch it. And then it stays down in there. See, it made clean getaway. And uh, my my container is almost empty. I've been using this a lot. I love this stuff, especially for the holiday seasons. All right, let me put this over here, and we will get going on this. Now, there's no special tip needed for this. I have tons of different tips for cake. Uh, and by that, I mean decorating tips, okay? You can see I didn't put anything in there. And the reason for that is we don't really need it. We're just going to clip off the end. And we're going to sort of make like a round edge our end uh, tip ourselves. So I'm just, gra I'm just grabbing it here. I'm going to twist around here like this. Now, <clears throat> I am going to cut the end. Cake decorators usually cut like a little tiny piece at the end uh, for writing and such. But I'm going to cut off. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to cut off about this much. Can you see what I'm cutting off right here? Now, I'm going to test it. If it's not wide enough, I can cut off more. So now I'm just going to squeeze it. I'm going to hold like this and squeeze all the way down. I'm going to pressure with my fingers, okay? Holding with my um, the palm of my hand and, and applying pressure with my fingers. And then I'm going to twist it. And then I'm going to keep the, um, what is this? Like the apex between your thumb and your first finger. I'm going to twist it. I'm going to keep that right there. That's going to um, keep it closed. All right, let me squeeze it out and see if that's enough. That's not really enough. Uh, so I'm going to squeeze it back in. just wasn't the size that I wanted. 
So I'm going to squeeze all that back and cut the hole just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. All right. Okay, so Sherilyn Sprinkle, thank you so much. Kimberly, hello. Claudia, hello. She Sprinkle, thank you so much. All right, now we're going to get going. Now this is what I did. I took, and I'm going to hold it up here so you can see it. Hopefully, I can figure out, I can see what's going on, too. Um, I started down the end and just put little dots. Dot, dot, dot. They don't have to be too close together. I hope I, I didn't even put them all the way to the bottom, you guys, because I can't see. All right, and then I took a large popsicle stick. Now, you could also use your icing spatula. I just didn't make my dots very big, okay? And hopefully, again, I can see this. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take um, that... Uh, spackling and I'm going to um, push down on just a little bit and drag it up oh gosh you guys I can't see anything so um, one of the reasons that we want to make sure that we're painting our tree is because there might be some you know so to speak blank parts you know you may not get everything you can see I didn't get at the very bottom because I couldn't see what I was doing but that way, um, like, it doesn't come out looking weird. And you can always fill that in. So now I'm going to go right above it. But I'm going to give it some space. So let me put them there, and then I'm going to show it to you, okay? So just dots again. Now, it doesn't have to be the same number of dots. Uh, don't get all whack or wacky on this or wrapped around the axle because it's not that scientific. So see how far up I went? And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come and push it down into that uh Push it towards the um, up towards the top. Push it down and pull, and push and pull. And um, it really is that simple. Okay, let me do some more. Hey, Kimberly, thanks thanks for the love. Now again, don't it doesn't have to be right over the other one. We're not really concerned about it. Um, all right, so I'll keep going. I would say on the first, um, on each of the levels, I would try to do like three layers. Um, and if it gets kind of like, there's like dooley dad, dealy dads, I don't know, Klingons hanging on there, don't worry about it. You can pick those off later after it dries. Don't try to mess with it too much while it's wet, okay? So now I've got some, now I've got to start all the way out here, okay? Because that edge. So I'm going to put one here. Again, we're not caring that it's... I got to see it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll show it to you when I'm done. There we go. So we're not caring about, you know, is it even? Is, you know, am I doing the right number? Is it the same number per, per layer? It doesn't matter. You do this with paint. You do, Kimberly. Okay, great. All right, so for me, um, I, I personally decided to use this method um, today because I was uh, certainly on a, a kick with them, kick with it uh, after some videos I was working on. But I, I also um, like the way that it sets up and dries faster. And then it really just, um, you know, it, it doesn't mess up very easily. With me, with paint, I just don't uh, like to do this type of technique with paint. Now, on a canvas, yes, but just not on this type of project, you know. All right. All right, you guys see? All right, let me finish it off. Um, and I will, you know, have it facing me to finish it off. Um, just so we can uh, get to the others. We will set this one aside and let it dry. And um, then we'll start working on the patterns and we'll see what it is that I want to do with the one that's already dry. Okay, I was thinking, I love the texture, but the color white wasn't going to be good enough for me. I, I need something else on it, you know. I know it's, it's not going to be traditional. I was thinking I wanted to go with that Irish cream, right? I wanted to go like a more natural kind of look. I don't even know what you'd call that, but um, that's what I want to do. Now, I'm getting towards the top. I'm going to do three. This is the way I ended up. Two. And the very top, just one, okay? And then I am going to pull that all the way to the end. Now, if you don't like, if it's hanging off the edge or whatever, you can sort of scrape around the edge, but I would just leave it, honestly. All right, so I'm going to set that. Do you like the way that turned out? Can you see it okay? Look at it. Isn't that cute? Cute, cute. Okay, 
Let me put that aside because I want to move on to, hang on just a sec. I got to find some place to put this. I want to move on. Uh, so how many of you guys are going to try that? I made this little guy over the weekend using that stuff and I really love it. Just totally loved it. All right, we will do a, um, a project with you guys on that one so you can see how it comes together. All right, I'm setting that off to the side. Now I'm going to work on the rest of them. So I decided two trees that have this texture, okay? And then I want, and they're going to be white. And the base I'll put turn on the white side. They'll be white. So I will put them like front. And then, uh, let me turn around the other way. Three little ones, three little ones in the front. The slots go this way. They're three and two. So you choose what goes in the front. But they're smaller, so they'll go in the front. So I'll have the textured ones on the side. Then I have this other one that I'm going to flip. I'm going to do um, this cream color in the middle. And I'm going to uh, chalk it with white. Then I'm going to, I really want my white... Um, Texture to pop. So behind the textured ones, I'm also going to put this cream color one. Okay? So hang with me. Um, let's get the patterns out and see where we're going. You want to see that house again? Well, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. You'll just, um, you can pop on and watch the, uh, reel. Um, but it's, a uh, it's our house and it's got, um, just, uh, that, it's got some caulk on it, actually, and um, some fake snow, and this is just some sprigs of greenery and some more snow along the bottom. And um, that's with our new Christmas quads, Mrs. Claus. Uh, it was, uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Okay, your spackle is pink. Oh, so I did want to tell you guys, if you want to change the coloring of your spackle, sometimes I do that. Good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, oh, you're saying your, your spackle is pink. It dries white, though. That type of spackle is made to be pink until it dries, and that's how you know that it's not dry yet, is it doesn't change white until it's dry. It stays pink when it's wet. Okay, so, um, but if you do want to change your spackle, which I do, you can add chalk paste to it. Now, just do a little at a time, and then whip it up like you would um, frosting. I mean, just like with a, uh, a spatula or something like that. Um, but yeah, you can add color to, to the spackling, no problem. You could even add um, food coloring, not a problem. I tend to go with a chalk paste because if I am going in one direction with the, the chalk paste and I want it to match something, I want the same, it to be in the same like, family, you know. Okay, awesome, great idea. I'm glad you like it. All right, so here is my, let me get this stuff out of the way. Here are my trees. Let me just find... <laughs> what did I do? There's my pen. Okay, I'm going to use, I've decided on the front where the snowflakes are, I mean, uh, where the cream color one is that I'm going to do white. I'm going to use the snowflakes, and in the back, I wanted a lot of white on top of that cream, so I'm going to use this one, okay? So, I'm going to, I don't know, this is called squiggles or something. Squiggles, and then this is snowflakes. Snowflake trees. Don't forget uh, to uh, squiggles trees. Okay, don't forget to name them uh, something that's important to you. And you'll remember because um, when you cut them apart and you wash them and then you come try to put the backing sheet on them, you want to make sure that it's the right one and it fits, right? I hate when I lose my backing sheet. So we do actually have backing sheets for sale you can if you lose yours ruin it whatever we do have backing sheets for sale if you need more and I always need more okay I needed to get out my fuzzing my tacky towel and the reason I'm getting my tacky towel out is I just painted these guys and I don't want to ruin them so I'm going to start with the snowflakes I'm so glad that I joined this company. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad you've joined too. All right, so I'm gonna take a stick side down and put it on my uh, tacky towel, and I am just going to uh, pull up 
And what I'm doing is just getting a little bit of lint and kind of removing a little bit of that stickiness. Not really removing it so much as I'm just trying to make sure it picks up a little bit of lint. So when I put it on my trees, it'll be easy to remove, easier to remove. All right, so here is the tree that I painted that cream color. And I'm going to line this stencil up on it right now. And so this stencil is great if you want to use it on its own. You don't need to use it with the trees because it does have an outline of a tree. So it's it's easy to use um, on anything. Um, but let's see. Got to line this puppy up. All right. There we go. All right. I'm all, now I'll let you see. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to go in with the white. Now, I got something that I wanted to do. I thought it might be cool to add some shine. So, after I do this in the white, I have decided I'm either going to add gold glitter um, or I'm going to... Oh, gosh. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Or I'm going to add the silver. So what do you guys think? Um, after I chalk and I'll remove it on the snowflakes, do you think that I should add gold glitter or silver glitter or no glitter? You tell me. Let me know what you think while you're deciding. I will go ahead and um, put this tree thing on my tacky towel. Uh, I don't... I didn't know we could add glitter. I have lots of glitter. Oh, girl. Okay, we have to do glitter for you. All right, Sherilyn, since you didn't know that, I want you to... Hey! Um, I want you to tell me which color glitter you want me to add. Silver glitter, Diana says. Sherilyn, does that work for you too? Silver glitter. Actually, that makes pretty good sense because it is snow. Um, gold. Angie says gold. Well, all right, here's the conundrum we find ourselves in. So I've got white. It's on a, that's what I'm going to use on it, right? It's on a cream colored tree. That's the snowflakes. And then the other tree is going to, is white and it's going to have some cream colored stuff that we're going to put on later. Let's going to have this Irish cream. So silver or gold. I see the gold accents behind you on your fireplace. So I would say gold. All right. Gold it is. All right, so what I'm doing then is I'm just going to put a little piece of paper underneath this uh, because when I remove it, I'm going to throw the glitter on right away. Now, here's the key to put, to putting glitter on your projects that you have, um, that you've chalked. The key is, got to get the lid out, right? Uh, the key is putting it on while the chalk paste is wet. And then it will stick to the chalk paste. Let me get this out of here. Don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, let me see. Oh, I never, I haven't even opened this, you guys. All right. Sorry, typed, forgot to send. Glitter distracted me. I'm thinking gold. Okay, everybody's loving the gold. We're going for gold. We're going for the gold. All right. So I got my glitter ready, and that's very important in this project. Be sure to have your glitter ready. So I've got my beautiful, yummy-looking white chalk paste, and I'm going to squeegee it on right now. And just making sure that my stencil is down good and have good contact between my stencil and my surface. And then I'm going to just squeegee on. You guys can see. I hope you can see that okay. Um... It's like, a, you know, I wish I had like an overhead where you can do this, you know, like C, straight on and overhead, like picture in picture kind of thing. If someone knows how to do that. That would be so ooty cool, but I don't know how. Okay. All right. So you always want to peel your stencil off when the chalk paste is dry. I mean, wet anyway. So, you know, as soon as you peel it off, that's when you're going to want to put the glitter on. So I'm peeling it off and put this to the side. Then I'm going to put my glitter on right away. All right, and then I'm just going to work it around. I Maybe we should have put silver because um, it's covering up my white, but I mean, it's okay. You guys decided that was your deal. 
That was your decision. All right, here we go. Okay, see it? Do you see the glitter? All right, so maybe, um, so we did gold on this one. Now, I don't play with it until after it dries. If there's excess glitter, I wait for everything to dry, and then I'll hit it with my heat gun or something like that just to blow the rest of it off, okay? And then since I had it in this little paper, um, when I'm done, um, I can funnel it and put it right back in the container. All right, so let me set this one aside, and we'll get going on the larger one. Now, the larger one, so that was it for that stencil because that stencil's only going to be used one time. Remember, on either side, we're going to do that new cool uh, idea that we had. All right, let me marry this one up with its backing and put it aside for now until I can clean it. And then I have already... Down here on my lap, I am using this um, tacky towel to pick up some lint. It's important to pick up a little bit of lint on some surfaces, especially non-porous, so that you don't pull away, pull your stencil away, and have it stretch. That stretching your stencil is never good, ever, never good. All right, so we just get these lined up. So the way that these surfaces were cut. These, these surfaces were cut to be about a quarter of an inch bigger than the design so that you can put the design on there, all right? All right, so let me just smooth it out and then we'll get going on that. I think for these, I'm going to put, I think I'm gonna put this um, lid on the wild side. I am going to do silver and gold, how you like that? Let's do that. Let me put the gold aside and I'll flip this over so I don't mix it too much. Okay, Sandy, we are in Green Valley, not too far from me now. Oh, hey. Well, that's nice. That would be great if you guys got together. All right, here we go. I'm going to draw cut the white again. Now, this is quite a bit of space, so we're probably going to get a... Oh, I didn't smooth that down. Oh, I didn't really smooth it down, so hopefully it just doesn't bleed under. Um, all right, so... We're going to get a lot of silver on this because there's a lot of chalk based. All right, a lot of area of this positive space here, negative space, whatever it ends up being when you are chalking. Just uh, <clears throat> squeegeeing it on and then going to squeegee off the excess. Now, I'm not going to do like super, super thin, but we never, ever want it to be thick either because that is a not a good day in the chalking world. <laughs> we need less is more, right? All right, taking it all the way to the edge. Here we go. Let me peel it off, and then we'll throw the silver on there. Put that aside for now because I'm going to need to use it again. See what we've got. I could just even leave it like that, you guys. But let me throw some silver on there. And uh, I don't have to even put it on the whole thing. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, we've got silver and we've got gold. One more, and then we're going to move on to the special technique that I wanted to do on the on this one that we worked on. Okay, and this one has our lightweight spackling. Our lightweight spackling. That's what we're using. All right, in a um, cake decorating cone. Okay, last one. Um, and then we'll put it all together. Uh, well, I, we got to finish that other one. Okay, so let's put this. I say we like you guys doing this. I think we should have a couple hundred kids tonight. Oh, how cool, Sandy. Sandy, you done with your pool? How's your house coming? All right. Some of you guys I get to see on Facebook, and it's nice. All right, so I'm just going to, uh, I can use that right away as long as I don't let it dry. If I let it dry, I can go over it with a little, um, uh, you know, maybe if it was just, maybe not totally dry, but um, I would just go over it with a disinfectant wipe just to reconstitute that paste in there so it doesn't clog my screen. Either that or... Depending on how long I'm sitting here chatting and not using the stencil, I could just get up and go wash it 
and lay it upside down to dry and then try to use it or uh, then use it again on the project on the next piece. All right, but now we are just rocking with it. We are living on the edge. Now it's going to turn out great. Okay, so that's too much. I got too much right here. All right, so now I'm going to peel this one off. Oh, it turned out fantastic. All right, let me put that off to the side. Oh, it's sticking. It's sticking to me and itself. All right, now we're just a little bit more glitter. A little bit of glitter. Glitter makes everything beautiful. It's never really a glitter person. Like in the stuff I wear and stuff. Never really into that. I do like me some glitter on some crafts. All right. Just put a little more on. All right, so how's it coming? What do you think? Let me put these two in the back. So then I'm going to put it right down in here. You see how it's got a little tab and it just locks in place. Let me bring it here so you can see it. Just putting it here. Where to put my other one? Right here. I'm not going to mess with any of the chalk paste right now. You know, wait, maybe I should put these. I think I'm going to put these up here. But I'm definitely not going to be messing around with these too much because I don't want to mess up the design I got going on. Let's see. I'm out of whack. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing. We'll go the other way. I'm going to go this way. I can't decide. Help me. Help me. All right. Let's turn around this way. And we'll put the two smaller ones up front. For some reason, I thought I was going to put the three smaller ones up front. But let's do this way. And put this one right here. Ah, come on now. Yeah, it is meant to put the three, the three small ones together. But I don't know if that's going to work out for us. Okay, trying one more time. Great thing about it, we can keep moving around, right? Keep moving it around. There we go. Now we got it. All right, here we go. But you can see that this is getting started this way. As you can see right now, I could have designed the other side and done a totally different theme. I could do red. I could do black. That turned out beautiful last year. Some grays. I saw different people do different things. They turned out gorgeous. All right, so now let's set this off to the side, and I wanted to show you what I wanted to do. All right, so I got, you can see I'm not, like I'm not using this Irish cream right now, but I had an idea for this. So let me put this away, and I'll show you what my idea was. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jennifer, for sending the stars. I do appreciate that. I'm not. Okay, I haven't opened this yet. Yeah, who loves opening new paste for the first time? Well, where's my little doodad here? Ugh. All right, well, I'm just going to grab the first thing I see. All right. That away. Good morning, Cindy. A little late. Well, Cindy, we have been working on these trees. And surprise, surprise, we are using a new method 3D for our trees. Okay, so what I was thinking is, how am I going to get this just on, like, the tips of this tree? Now, I, I started this new thing that I like. And that is using the back of a sponge. And what I do for that is I just take um, a little bit of paste, chalk paste, and just put it over, just paint it right on the sponge, okay? Now, you guys, I haven't even, I didn't try this off camera, so we're doing this together. <laughs> okay, it's always a good idea to try something off camera, but I didn't. I use this method all the time and everything else. Lots of stuff. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I wonder if I can do it to where you can see. I'm just going to take this and lightly brush over the top. Let, let me do a couple and I'll show you. I'm just lightly brushing. 
Uh, let me put a little more on and I'm going to show you. This is so, it's such a cool idea and it's a great way to age things and get, you know, that like used look or weathered look or whatever. Just lightly brushing it over. Now, this is the one that I let dry. Okay, so the other one I'm not going to be able to do this to for a few hours. All right, so let me put a little more on so you can see it, right? I'm just putting a little bit of chalk paint, chalk paste on this Brillo pad and I'm just rubbing it across the edge to catch these trees, uh, the ends of these trees. All right, so the tips, I don't know. All right, can you see that? Now it's popping more. Those, can you see that? The, <laughs> the um, edges of the tree are popping more. I just love all the different ideas. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. Now, if you guys wanted a different color, you could. You know, if you were like, hey, I really love this idea, and I've been just sitting here playing with it for a while, and uh, now I want some glitter on it. You could just come in here with a little bit of Mod Podge and put some uh, Mod Podge on the ends of these trees and then throw some glitter on it, okay? Which, if I had Mod Podge sitting here, I would do. Uh, but I do not. All right, so there is my treat. Let me put it in place. Now, it's not super, super dry, so cross your fingers. I don't smush anything. All right, let me get the other tree. Now, it is not dry at all, so I'm not going to be able to do that technique on it, right? Because that's the one that we did together. I need to let this one dry for a while before I do anything to it. So let me put that one in there. Now I have to be super careful because I don't want to mess up the edges. Come on, get in there. Now these do, they stick in there really well. I'm just afraid to push this one down too much because it's wet. Okay. Let me show you what I've got. Look at the 3D effect. Do you guys like that? You like that? I love it. So, the, the thank you, Faye. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying so. Now, to finish this guy off, now, I'm going to turn this around. Now, remember, I said you could do something different on the other side, right? On the white, the back of the white one, I painted that one the um, cream color like I did the others. So, I, so I could go either way. This one I didn't paint it all yet, just to give you some you guys some idea of the flexibility of both sides, right? I could do, like, on the other side, just layers and layers of ribbon or lace or anything I want to do. So my thought was I want to take this and make a bow, but, you know, you guys, um, I'm not really the best. Um, let me see what I can do about a bow here with this. I don't know. You know, a bow sounded like a good idea until I got this thing out there. This is like a, um, it's like a fuzzy, like a fur bow, and I was thinking about putting it here. Let me look. I think I will. Let me, let me just do it real quick. You guys hang with me, uh, and I'll put it on, and you, you know, we'll see what we think. If you don't like it, we always take it off, right? All right, let me dovetail these. This is some really cool ribbon, really cool. I don't even know where I got this. It says the Boutique Ribbon. I know I got this as a yard sale or something. Um, love the 3D look. Linda from Arizona. Hey, Linda from Arizona. You've got some, you got some sisters out there in Arizona. Some chocolate sisters. I guess I didn't need to do the, the tail of this one. All right, so I'm thinking... You guys, I need to be fired on the bows. But I did, uh, so my daughter came last week and she totally cleaned up and organized my whole, she kicked me out of this spot, made me move to another office. This is now the filming room, the craft room. Everything is organized. Man, she just needs to come back all the time. Okay, that's not a good bow. That's not a good bow, is it? No. Okay. We do one more try, and then we will call it a day on the bow. 
we'll just put it in place for you to see what it looks like. Yeah, I need to like get a full time bow maker. <laughs> but anyway, when my daughter was cleaning up, she found that Bodara or whatever. Um, I just still haven't used it. Still have not used it. Silliness. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let me uh, try real quick <laughs> putting this bow together, you guys. Oh. This is like a last minute decision here on this bow, and I probably just should have left the good I let the good idea fairy die on that one. I don't know. Uh, okay, snow at the bottom, not a bow. Let's do snow. Hang on. Hang on. All right, guys. So we're going to gussy it up. I got, since I decided to walk on the wild side there, I'm going to take my uh, Mod Podge and I am going to put some, uh, a little bit of gold on this, the, the area that we um, put the chalk base on right here. I can put just a smidge of gold and then I'm going to put some uh, snow, some fake snow on the bottom. Great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. All right, so now I've got my, I'll use this, it's a different color. So what I meant by the snow is, I mean, uh, yeah, by the glitter is if you've already finished a project and you're, and you're like, dang, I want some glitter, you can put some, just come in with Mod Podge just in a few places or wherever you want. It's, it's your project, so you can do whatever you want. I'll take this off. And um, Mod Podge is great for adding glitter later. I do it a lot on lots of things. All right, so let me throw a little bit of glitter on there. Oh, that was a good call. Good call on the glitter. Now, when the other one dries, I'll do the same to it because I still need to put the, you know, the chalk paste on it. All right, so let's put some um, Mod Podge on the bottom. And uh, let me, and then we'll put some snow. So I just uh, just put it wherever. Put it all around. Now I imagine it'd be a whole lot easier if I took these these trees out of here, but they're in place already. They're sticking just fine. No need to move them. So I'm just gonna leave them on and go all around the trees. Um, don't have to be super careful. I just put it wherever, you know, the Mod Podge. Um, this is my little paintbrush. All right, got it covered real well while it is still dry. Gonna go ahead, I mean, wet while it's still wet. Gonna go ahead in with this uh, glittery snow and let's put some on there. Thanks for the idea on the snow. Such a better idea than what I was gonna do. Now, there's all different types of snow, but the um, fake snow, but the kind I had, oh gosh, the kind I had. Um, uh, was not it was either this one or the styrofoam one and I don't think the styrofoam one would have been my choice for this just because there's glitter in other places so all right now what I always do is when my when my snow dries or uh, when the Mod Podge dries that's when I uh, take off the excess snow and not until then because I don't want to disturb the look all right now I got stuff everywhere you guys look at that everywhere <laughs> Put this ribbon aside. That was not a good choice. All right. Let's see what we've got. I'll clean all that up later. All right. Thank you, Linda, for that awesome suggestion. This is our new technique with the spackling, lightweight spackling paste on our trees to make give them a 3D look with uh, the MDF 5 pack on the trees and the tree patterns. There we go. Now it went through. And... Um, painting one side white the other was cream and then uh, we added let me push them back down in there okay and then we uh, added some glitter to our chalk base while it was still wet after we chalked then put glitter on the top and and then we came in after the spackling is dry fully dry 
came in with a Brillo pad with a little bit of chalk paste on it and just rubbed it over on the areas that kind of stood out. And then we decided later to put Mod Podge and a little bit of glitter. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it makes you think outside of the box when you are crafting. And thanks so much for joining me. We got other stuff coming up today. So it's going to be a super day with lots of fun stuff. I hope you will join for me. I'm ready to jump right into Christmas. I mean, I love Thanksgiving, but I am ready to move on. It's getting cold and I'm loving me some trees. So thank you again for joining me. And um, thank you. I appreciate all the compliments. You guys have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.